So in this example, I've already got the GNS3 GUI installed. I showed you the installation of that in a previous video in this series. So the next step is to integrate the GNS3 GUI with the GNS3 VM. These two routers are using the local installation, but I'll create a new topology using viral images and the GNS3 VM. Now, before I show you the integration, let me warn you, there's a problem with VMware Workstation version 14. A number of users have commented in the GNS3 community about problems importing the GNS3 VM with VMware Workstation 14. This is now a well-known issue with VMware version 14 and causes problems, and therefore you should not be using the VMware Workstation version 14. Now, at the time of this recording, version 14.0 of VMware was the latest release available. Later releases may have solved this problem, but please be aware that if you have problems integrating the GNS3 VM with a VMware, go back to an older release of a VMware Workstation. I'll put the link below, but you can do a search in Google for version 12 of a VMware Workstation. So don't download version 14. Make sure that you download version 12 of a VMware Workstation. On GitHub, this has been recognized as a issue, but it doesn't just affect GNS3. Jeremy, one of the core developers of GNS3, has recognized this as an issue, but please note that it also affects Cisco Viral. So on the Cisco website, you'll find people having issues with a Viral and VMware Workstation version 14, and the recommendation for Viral is to also use VMware Workstation 12. So please note, don't use VMware Workstation 14 with a GNS3. Now again, there may be a later release of Workstation 14, 14.1.2, and so forth, that may work, but at the time of this recording, version 14.0 of VMware has problems. So don't use version 14.0, go back to version 12. So what I'm gonna do here is download version 12.5.8 of VMware Workstation. Now you'll have to log in. If you don't have an account, register for an account with a VMware. But in this example, I'm gonna log in with my username and my password. You need to agree to the license agreement to download the software. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna save the software to my local hard drive. So VMware Workstation version 12.5.8 is now being downloaded to my local hard drive. Now it's recommended that you shut down the GNS3 GUI before you integrate the GNS3 VM. So what I'm gonna do now while I'm waiting is shut down the GNS3 GUI. So I'm gonna simply make sure that the GNS3 GUI has closed. And at this point, my download is completed. So I'm gonna open up the downloads folder. So as you can see here, VMware Workstation has downloaded. I'm gonna double click on the file. Say so yes to install the software and the VMware Workstation Pro installation wizard starts. I'm simply gonna click next, agree to the terms and just click next, 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 next through the installation wizard. You can change some of the options if you want to but at this point, I simply wanna get a VMware Workstation installed. So change the options if you want to and wait for VMware to be installed. VMware is now installed, so I'm gonna click Finish. I'll start up a VMware Workstation Pro, which I'm gonna call VMware Workstation from now on. 
I'm going to run it using a trial license for 30 days. I have to enter my email address. So I'm going to enter my email address here and click continue. I'm going to click yes to allow VMware to make changes and click finish. So VMware Workstation is now installed. I'm not going to install the latest version of VMware. Now this software will run for 30 days in evaluation mode. You'll need to purchase a license within 30 days to continue using the software. If you don't want to purchase VMware Workstation Pro, then use a VMware Workstation Player. Now back on the GNS3 website, I'm going to click free download to download the GNS3 VM. So again, if you don't have an account, sign up for an account. Otherwise, log in with your GNS3 username and password. Now previously, we downloaded the GUI Windows installation file. Now I'm going to click download the GNS3 VM to download the GNS3 VM. In this example, I want to download version 2.1 for VMware Workstation. So I'm going to click download to download the software to my local computer. That's opened up another window, but nothing seems to be happening. So I'm going to go back to the previous tab. And I can see here that I'm asked, do I want to save the software? I'm going to say yes to save it to my local hard drive. So just be careful. It's going to open up a tab to GitHub. If nothing seems to be happening, go back to your previous tab and click Save to save it to your local computer. All you need to do now is wait for that download to complete. OK, so the download has completed. I'm going to click Open Folder. And as you can see here, a zip file has been downloaded. I'm going to right click on the zip file and click Extract All to extract the files in the zip file. Here's the extracted file. It's an OVF file or Open Virtualization Format file. So in my downloads directory, I now have a folder GNS3 VM workstation 2.1.0 with the GNS3 VM. So back in VMware Workstation, I'm going to go to File, Open, Browse to my downloads directory, open up the GNS3 VM folder and select the GNS3 VM and click open. The default name is GNS3 VM. Leave that as it is. You can change the path for the GNS3 VM, but it's recommended that you keep it at the default. So I'm going to click import to import the GNS3 VM. So all I've done here is import the GNS3 VM using the default values. The GNS3 VM is now imported. And as you can see, it is successfully imported into VMware Workstation. So now I'm going to go back to the GNS3 GUI and open it up. Again, make sure that the GNS3 GUI is shut down before you import the GNS3 VM. What I'm going to do here is create a new project called GNS3 VM1. Then I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, select a GNS3 VM, click Enable the GNS3 VM. In the drop down, I'm going to select a VMware Workstation or Player, click Refresh, and notice it's picked up the GNS3 VM. If it doesn't, I suggest that you shut down GNS3, shut down VMware Workstation, and reboot your computer. If it still doesn't work, delete the GNS3 VM, and then import it back into VMware Workstation. Now you can specify the amount of RAM and virtual CPUs that the GNS3 VM will use. This very much depends on the hardware that you have in your computer. So set it to the highest value that you can but not too high in case it uses up all the resources on your computer. So that really depends on what you've got available. When you close the GNS3 GUI, you have various options. You can keep the GNS3 VM running, you can suspend it, 
or you can stop it. The default is to stop it. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna click apply. Now notice what happens on the right hand side here. At the moment I only have a desktop integration. But the GNS3 VM is now picked up and VMware is automatically started. Now in this example, I've been told that I need to have a VTX enabled. If your host doesn't have VTX enabled, you need to shut your computer down and go into the BIOS of your computer and enable Intel VTX. Enabling VTX settings in your BIOS depends on your computer. So have a look at the documentation for your computer and ensure that you've got VTX enabled. So in this example, I'm having problems. So what I'm gonna do is shut down GNS3 and shut down my computer and then enable VTX settings on my computer. So again, because we're using what's called a nested virtualization, we need to have VTX enabled in the BIOS of our computers to run the GNS3 VM.